hello everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more so we are continuing our salivary gland session so this session is about uh, the histology basically uh, the types of uh, cells that is asina units we have serous cells mucous cells and myoepithelial cells then the ductal system that is endocalated ducts striated ducts and terminal ducts so before that the structure so as you see here the picture the salivary gland consists of series of branch ducts which is terminating in spherical or tubular secretory end pieces or acini okay it looks like grapes so analogy is a bunch of grapes okay so you can see here bunch of grapes that is a analogy okay so analogy is bunch of grapes for the ductal system so the stems of this bunch of grapes that is a ducts and the grapes which is at the end piece they are the secretory end pieces and the main secretory ducts which empties into the oral cavity so this is the main secretory duct which is empties into the oral cavity so this picture shows a gland so each gland is divided into lobes and lobules by means of connective tissue septa okay so intercalated ducts intercalated ducts which is the smallest or also known as intra lobular okay which is present within the lobules which is the smallest one okay so intercalated ducts is the smallest one then we have intra lobular ducts which is known as the striated ducts which is also intra lobular and finally we have the excretory duct which is a interlobular okay interlobular ducts so this is a sequence this is a excretory duct which excretes a secretion into oral cavity which is the biggest one this is the smallest and this is the biggest one excretory is the biggest okay now we have the histology so we have the acina units and ductal system so the basic functional unit of salivary gland is terminal secretory unit which is known as acina okay so acina so so as you see the picture here you have all the parts that is myoepithelial cells intercalated ducts mucous end pieces serous demilunes intercellular canaliculus the lumen striated duct serous end piece so the basic functional unit as i mentioned it is known as acini so the secretory unit is made of serous mucus and myoepithelial cells so the cells in the acini rest on a basement membrane and the junctional complexes hold the cells together and the myoepithelial cells are located on the surface of acini so the central lumen as you see here is star shaped because of the extension okay so you can see the extension of lumen between the cells that is the intercellular canaliculi and the mucus acini has larger lumen than the serous acini and the central lumen which continue via fine series of ducts which finally form the excretory duct that is the ultimate ductal system okay so the picture we can see all the parts now first starts with the serous cells so it is basically uh, as you see here it is pyramidal with broad base on the basement membrane and apex towards the lumen the spherical nucleus is placed at the basal region okay and the basal cytoplasm is packed with parallelly sacked area that is rough endoplasmic reticulum which is placed basal and lateral to the 
cell nucleus. Can you see here? The lumen usually has finger-like extension located between the adjacent cells called intercellular canaliculi. That increases the size of the luminal surface of the cell. And the secretory granules which is known as zymogen. So these zymogen granules contains glycolated proteins which is stored in a vacuole. So the apical cytoplasm shows secretory granules that is around 1 millimeter in diameter. So this is the apical region and these granules are closely opposed but retain their individuality. So it can be visualized in sections using toluene blue or any special stains. So there will be immature granules which is paler in density and mature granules will be dense. So there are intercellular junctions between the serous cells. They are tight junctions. Uh, they adhering uh, using desmosome and there are gap junctions which allow the passage of ions and small molecules between the cells. Now we have the mucus cells. The picture you can see here. It is a little different than the serous one. The mucus cells, its structure differs from serous cells, that is, the apex of the cell appears empty except for thin strand of cytoplasm forming a trabecular network. Okay. And the nucleus and the rims of cytoplasm are compressed against the base of the cell, which is compressed. Before it was a round one, now it is compressed. Nucleus of the mucus cell is oval or flattened in shape and located just above the basal plasma membrane. So mucus cells show accumulation of large amount of secretory product in apical cytoplasm. So this mucus cell is seen to be filled with pale translucent secretory droplets which is containing scattered flocculent material okay, which can be uh, stained using PAS and Alcyon blue stains and uh, they are also uh, joined by uh, desmosomes. Mucus secretion differs from serous secretion in two ways. One is they have little or no enzymatic activity. Okay, no enzymatic activity compared to the serous one. And mainly serves for lubrication and protection of the oral tissues. That is the main function of mucosa. That is a mucus secretion. And the ratio of carbohydrate to protein, carbohydrate to protein is larger and greater in mucosa compared to mucus cells compared to the serous cells and the amount of sialic acid is also large. So this is the picture you can see very clearly this is the serous cells you can see this is the mucus cells how it is different serous cells we have very round nucleus this is a flattened nucleus now we have the myoepithelial cells myoepithelial cells are contractile cells associated with secretory end pieces and intercalated ducts of salivary glands because it is uh, almost similar to smooth muscles but which are derived from epithelium these cells are located between the basal lamina and secretory or ductal cells so the plasma membrane of these myoepithelial cells joins the basal membrane of parenchymal cells by desmosomes. And there are, uh, these are the stellate or spider-like cells with flattened nucleus. You can see the flattened nucleus here and flat perinuclear cytoplasm and long branching process that embrace the secretory and duct cells. So their appearance is like basket, basket cradling the secretory unit, so known as the basket cells. So myopathial cells is also known as basket cells because their appearance is like the basket cradling the secretory unit. The cell organelles are restricted to perinuclear cytoplasm. So their structure is almost similar to smooth muscles we already mentioned and the studies indicated that it has got myosin and actin they helps to contract 
and there is a regular pulsating uh, movement of the entire unit is happening so that is about uh, the myoepithelial cells and its functions are accelerate the initial outflow of saliva from SNA so it's contractile action uh, inject or it secretes the uh, saliva from the main excretory duct it contributes to the secretory pressure in the SNA or duct and it support the underlying parenchyma and reduce the back permeation of the fluid so that is uh, the functions that is mainly so the main functions are initial outflow and uh, contribute to secretory pressure and reduce the back permeation of the fluid now the decks we already seen it starts from the intercalated decks then the striated decks both are intra lobular decks within the lobule whereas the excretory duct or terminal duct which is the interlobular which is present between the lobules so it is almost like a grape branches of a grape bunch of grapes you can see this the spherical secretory NPs here, the tubular secretory NPs, the canaliculus between the cells, intercalated duct, the striated duct, and the excretory duct, and finally the main excretory duct. So the first one, intercalated duct, which is lined by single layer of cuboid cells with relatively clear uh, cytoplasm, and functions they modify saliva through secretory and resorptive processes they contribute to substances like lactoferrin and these decks also house undifferentiated cells which can undergo differentiation and replace the damaged cells in the end piece or the striated duct the next one striated duct which is lined by columnar epithelium with centrally placed nucleus Cytoplasm is isnophilic and show prominent striations at the basal end of cells, which is perpendicular to the basal surface. As you see here, picture. And their functions, they are the site of absorption of sodium chloride, execution of potassium and bicarbonate. The reabsorption is against a concentration gradient, so it needs more energy. And the final excretory or terminal duct so as the excretory duct enlarges, it contains two layers, that is the mucosa and connective tissue. The mucosa epithelium is pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium and occasionally the goblet and ciliated cells. The ductal epithelium shows undergoes transformation to cuboidal and finally to stratified squamous epithelium. So that is uh, the ductal system. And the connective tissue, connective tissue is like uh, fibroblast, macrophages, mast cell, uh, leukocytes, all those things. So this connective tissue forms a capsule for the gland and it divides the gland into various lobules. So the vascular supply of the gland is also embedded within the connective tissue. Now let's move on to the minor salivary glands. So we were studying um, major salivary glands now we have the minor salivary glands so these glands are located beneath the epithelium in almost all parts of oral cavity they open by short decks directly into mouth and they lack distinct capsule and instead mixing with the connective tissue mucosa so salivary glands are absent in anterior lateral part of heart palate and gingiva okay so in gingiva and anterior lateral part of heart palate is devoid of minor salivary glands so we'll start with uh, the labial and buccal glands okay so the labial and buccal glands labial and buccal minor salivary glands the glands of the lips and cheeks are known as labial and buccal glands. Uh, they are mixed glands consisting of mucus SNA and serous demilunes. And intercalated decks are variable in length and intralobular decks possess only a few cells with basal striation. Next is the glossopalatine gland. They are pure mucus glands. 
localized to the region of isthmus in the glossopalatine fold but may extend from posterior extension of sublingual gland to uh, the glands of soft palate now we have the palatine glands they are pure mucus glands several hundreds of glandular aggregates in the lamina propria in this posterior lateral region not the anterior lateral posterior lateral region and in the submucus of soft palate and uvula the excretory ducts have irregular contour and their opening on the palatal mucus are large and easily recognizable and we have also lingual glands uh, they are known as blantin and nun that is anterior lingual glands plantain and nun they are located near the apex of the tongue chiefly mucus in nature but the posterior regions are mixed the ducts open near the ventral surface of tongue near the lingual frenum posterior lingual mucus glands they are located posterior and lateral to the valid papilla this is a circumvalid papilla and in association with lingual tonsil and Uh, they are mucus in character their ducts open on the dorsal surface of tongue now we have one more gland that is von ebner's gland they are located between the muscle fibers of the tongue below the valid papillae they are purely serous glands their ducts open through the valid papillae functions they believe to wash out uh, the trough of the papillae then it has got uh, enzymes and peroxidase which has got antibacterial properties and also lingual lipase uh, enzyme uh, that is about uh, the minor salivary glands and the last part of uh, salivary gland is saliva saliva the functions of saliva the components of saliva So saliva is a secretion of all these major and minor salivary glands along with discomated epithelium microorganisms food debris serum components and inflammatory cells so each gland secretion differs in amount and content so parotid gland which is more of watery saliva so parotid is more of watery saliva and it consists of enzymes that is amylase proline rich proteins and glycoproteins whereas a submandibular gland saliva it's like uh, in addition to the above it has got mucins okay this more of having mucins whereas a sublingual gland saliva is like viscous saliva compared to these two and composition uh, is the uh, various components is present here you can see uh, the table here uh, the daily volume is 600 to 1000 ml per day electrolytes it has got sodium potassium chloride bicarbonate calcium magnesium phosphate all those things and the proteins amylase uh, mucins proline rich proteins histamine peroxidase immunoglobulin it has got iga igg and igm then it has got glucose amino acid uric acid so the flow rate that is resting 0.2 to 0.4 uh, stimulated is 2 to 5 and ph is around 6.7 to 7.4 and the functions the functions uh, protection buffering tooth integrity antimicrobial activity tissue repair digestion and taste so protection it is uh, by water mucin so glycoprotein uh, function that is clearance lubrication thermal and chemical insulation then pellicle formation whereas a buffering that is a ph maintenance or neutralization of acids by help of bicarbonate phosphate and basic protein and ammonia tooth integrity that is enamel maturation and repair by the help of calcium phosphate fluoride and such ions then antimicrobial activity by physical barrier immune defense and non immune defense by secretory iga and all other things then the tissue repair by wound healing and epithelium that is by uh, regeneration and growth factors digestion it has got amylase lipase water mucin pollen formation triglyceride digestion finally the taste that is a solution of molecules maintenance of taste buds 
they are the functions of saliva that is all about salivary glands uh, the last session the session was a little lengthier so we were discussing uh, in the first session was about the uh, introduction that is the types classification the endocrine exocrine gland the serous mucus and all those things in the second session we learned about the anatomy uh, its structures and its arterial supply venous supply nerve supply and the third part is basically about the functional part that is acina ureus and the ductal system so it's a very very important chapter so lots of questions will be asked from this uh, acina ureus ductal system and you need to draw uh, pictures for everything and one more thing which i forgot to mention that is uh, serous demilion which is very commonly asked short note okay serous demilion uh, it's nothing but uh, cellular formation in the shape of half moon okay the shape of half moon so you see the picture here uh, because of this half moon it got this name that is uh, demilion which is present on some salivary gland okay so what is the importance because sera serous demilions are the serous cells at the distal end of mucus secretory uh, unit of certain salivary glands so these demilion cells secrete proteins that contain the lys enzyme lysozyme okay so which is present over the mucus glands that is a serous cells which is the which is at the distal end of mucus secretory unit of salivary gland that is serous demilions also basket cell is also important which is a myoepithelial cells so hope you understood the salivary gland it is a very very important chapter lots of question short notes short essay and long essay so you need to draw well labeled picture for every question that is acina units let it be serous mucus myoepithelial or ductal system you need to draw that a bunch of grapes that analogy and uh, you need to um, write point wise so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you